Hello and welcome to QB Factorium, or perhaps welcome back. I first discovered this game over two years ago, and then played it on stream about two years ago, and then again a little over a year ago. QB Factorium is a game by solo developer Mirko Siethi, and is a voxel graphics colony management game where you manage a group of colonists to expand your base, collect resources, and produce crafted materials. In the mid and later game, it has some logistic and automation components which add to the fun. There have been a number of changes since the last time I played. The UI has gotten some improvements, the third biome is finished, and there is a fourth that is in progress. The game has two modes, a single island sandbox and a campaign. The campaign guides the player through the progression of gathering and crafting, while the sandbox lets an experienced player do this for themselves. I've played through the campaign as it was at the time, twice, both times on stream. So this series will be based on a large sandbox map. But first I want to go into some of the different uh, settings and things that are available here. Um, first off for video, of, of course I'm playing at uh, 1920 by 1080 uh, because, well, I'm me. Uh, the windowed mode is just to handle um, stream capture, recording capture correctly uh, with the um, the way that Unity games sometimes work, uh, I have to be in windowed mode, but full screened and using a setting in uh, in Steam uh, to, to control a little bit. And that's for uh, cursor management and game focus and things. Uh, under settings are actually quite a lot. There's additional graphic settings, which kind of is interesting to me that there's graphic settings and there's video settings. Um, but I've kind of left these, I think, at their defaults. I don't think I missed mess with any of that. Of course, I've messed with the sound, and we might even have to mess with the sound a little bit more as we play. Because I think the music is a little bit loud still. Let's turn it down one more one more click. Uh, the gameplay stuff, I think I've left at default as well, except perhaps I may have turned off the scroll at border, because you all know that I don't like edge scrolling that much. Um, uh, markers for loading and mining jobs, that's good, yes. Uh, smooth zooming. Uh, right, mouse, right mouse button drag. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, it's going to give us some recommendations from low tiers uh, as we play. And it'll show warning flags on the buildings, which I'm a fan of, uh, that are uh, that are not set up correctly. Might as well have that. And then uh, there's, some assist, there's some assist mode stuff here, simplified game mechanics. I think the only one that I wouldn't want on... Um, no, actually, the only one that I might want off is is the assigning colonists to all tasks and workshops. Oh, or the, maybe the color zones. We'll get into that as we play. Uh, it's got auto save every three minutes. English, of course. I I think we need to have debug each slash cheat mode on for some of the later tier stuff. We'll see. Maybe we don't need it, but I, I won't use it unless I have to. Uh, F7 and F8, so I will avoid those keys. Uh, localization help. Auto pause uh, when the game loses focus. Actually, I'm going to turn that off. Uh, stream deck support. I don't know exactly what... I'm going to have to look in the help and find out what the stream deck support is. Um, I didn't see anything quickly in stream deck, but maybe there's something interesting there. I don't know what it would be, but uh, maybe, maybe there's something in there. And then uh, tool tips, and uh, we don't want the cursor locked to the game window. And then there are key bindings as well that we can get once we're actually in the game. Uh, as you can see, this game is, of course, in development because there are some uh, links up here that the icons aren't linking correctly, aren't laying correctly on the on the button. Um, I am playing the beta version. Uh, I'm subscribed to the beta in Steam, so that could be part of it. Uh, this game was released. Uh, this update, rather, was released just a day or two ago as I record this uh, on July 8th, um, 2021. So it's, it's a really uh, recent update, and uh, the developer is actively developing this. There are patch notes uh, available here in these uh, little arrows, and um, each each uh, each one is 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 uh each patch is, is listed here there are 352 patches and then of course the uh the, when you minimize the patch notes you have this that tells you about uh the biomes being playability of the biomes uh some some bugginess with campaign and map related stuff um and yeah so uh the other the other features are there's a custom map option here where you can pick a scenario 
And then you can modify it with different goals, different map sizes, different amounts of stranded colonists that you can find, uh, quantity of resources on the map, some cargo loadouts that are available depending on what tier you want to start, uh, what tier of cargo you want to pull off. I think cargo tier one is always included. Uh, enemy camps, how many enemy camps you want, the terrain shape, which is like, do you want flat terrain, do you want no water, do you want perfectly flat terrain, which I'm not sure what the difference is there, or just uh, the normal mountain, or uh, perfectly flat is listed twice. Yeah, perfectly flat is listed twice. And uh, you, can, you can have stranded goods or not. You can have um, an inventory target or not. And then, like, the goals here, you can earn money, claim map, defeat enemies, earn money's there again, make colonists happy, and production target. Oh, it's interesting. Okay. And then uh, you can turn on the different terrains on your island, turn on and off the different terrains. Uh, the last time we played, the Ashen World was barely playable, I think, or definitely the first time it was barely playable. It might have been somewhat playable the last time we played, but now it's fully playable, and uh, the ice tier is is uh still in development but and then you can randomize your seeds so you make sure you get a different map every time and then also just to continue with the uh with the discussion here the main cam main campaign is a work in progress but um you can um but you can still play it uh it, it it's a series of islands um the first island being a small island 64 cubic tiles or uh, 64 tiles cubed I guess would be, or squared rather, would be the way to say it. Uh, it's pretty flat, and there are two castaways available, no enemy camps. And then you progress around the main storyline here with some some uh, some islands that are side side missions, and you eventually work your way into a completely um, a completely ashen world here, and then you have some ice out over here. So um, that's. And they changed this a little bit since the last time I played, because I think since the last time I played, there were multiple paths. Like, you could go from here to either of these two, and then back to the other one, or to this one, whereas now it's a, it's a linear path that has some side missions attached to it. But we're not going to play the campaign. Yeah, let's go back to the main menu. We're going to just play this default uh, huge map option here, and uh, see how that plays out over the course of this series. We did the campaign twice, as I said, in the previous stream series that are both available here on YouTube, so you can search back on my channel and find those. So uh, our, our total, our ultimate goal here is to export goods. We need to have 4,200 coin. Uh, it gives us some recommendations on things to, to, to do first. We need to unload a bunch of resources. So the first thing we need here to do that is a stockpile. I'm going to create a decently sized stockpile, maybe uh, 4 by 3 12 tiles total. Yeah, we need to turn down some sound. Settings menu. I'm guessing that's ambience. The uh, the water. A little loud. And we're going to unload everything that's in the... Uh, it's, it's in the boat here into that stockpile. And we're just going to allow it to accept all. But we're not going to allow the colonists to use this as a stockpile. Now, it's hard to see this here, but these are slightly yellow uh, when they're selected and they're white when they're not. And the reason that I'm doing that is to only allow them to use this as a logistics stockpile, not as a, uh, as a, I just pick something up out in the world stockpile. I want to put it down here. Uh, so it tells us to unload the tier one resources and collect these items. And uh, we obviously don't have that much stuff. We've unloaded everything already. And so far, everything has, has amounted to some, some stone, some wood, and I think I saw some tools get unloaded as well. So the first thing we need to do is, is work on making some of these items as well as some food. And maybe food is the first, first thing. Yeah, let's do food first. So, uh, well, let's do two things first. Let's clear some islands. So I'm gonna use the uh, mining tool and mine and harvest tool. And mine and harvest tool includes both trees, rocks, and fields uh, of things you can you can collect. Anything that's collectible is uh, marked with the X over it, over it. And that includes things like chests. And I recommend that everyone um, collect anything you see that looks like a chest, or uh, later if they're in this game, uh, a... Um, 
a, uh, uh, a Christmas present. I don't know if they're in this game or not. There are various other things scattered around here. There are critters. There's a, there's a voxel shaped or voxel whatever frog. This is a hammer robot. Which, uh, all of your combat is done using robots. There's weeds growing various places here. There's uh, rocks like this one here out in the out in the, the shoreline. There are mushrooms growing. Uh, I don't. I think eventually they'll be harvestable, but for right now they're not. And there's an oil well, which uh, can be used later to well pump oil. Uh, there's also ferns here in this um, this uh, swamp land. I think is what it is. And branches that we can uh, we can clear if we want to use the land, but they don't give us anything. So some things will give you uh, items, like the stone blocks will give us four stone, or four rock, rather. A tree will give us two or three, I think, wood, depending on the type of tree. Yeah, spruce trees are two, oak trees are three, and I think it also depends on the growth level, too. So, uh, one of the other uh, tasks that we need to continually do on this game is to expand our uh, colony uh, land here. Um, that was one of the missions, or the objectives, options on the, um, on the custom map. Uh, generator, and that is to expand your map. And when you do that with, among other things, a bonfire. So we have just one bonfire here. It's maintaining this space that we have so far. And in the build menu here, shortcut key B, uh, we can choose to make things like torches, which are a cheap source of light, uh, well, which we'll need to do very soon as well, and bonfires and basic workplaces. Also foundation. Foundation is, oops, we can also search here, so be careful typing, pressing keys. Foundation is used to convert like beach land into ground. However, it is, does not convert into grassland. It converts into a special type of land that is only used, it can only be used to build on. It can't be used for farming or anything like that. I like to place these kind of near the edge-ish, but I also want to be careful that I don't, um, and sometimes I'll put them right along the coastline just so we can kind of see what's out there. Um, but you want to be careful because they take up a space and you can't build over it then. So you want to be careful where you place them a little bit. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and do some uh, farming. We have the farm tool here, uh, shortcut key F, farm zone rather, farm zoning tool I guess. And we can draw a box for a farm. I'm going to do just a 3x4 field here and another 3x4 field here. I want to assign these to, we want strawberries and tomatoes, so we'll do strawberry here and tomato here. And notice we still have a flag. What does that flag mean? It's down here, no output stockpile assigned. So then we need to put down a couple of stockpiles here, and we can click on the farm. And once we have the recipe selected, if you right click on a stockpile, this is one of those, uh, one of those tricks, one of those simplifications, which is really useful. And I would never turn this off for that reason. Uh, so this this uh, farm is ready to till now, and somebody is actually tilling it. Uh, but it also output its output the strawberries into this stockpile once they're grown and harvested. The same thing for the tomatoes. We have that here, and we can go here. And the reason that I like that that simplification feature is it automatically sets the filter, the accepted type filter here for this uh, stockpile to the item that the farm produces. Now, if we if we had had a production area that produced two items, we'd have to be a little more careful with that management, but that's fine. And if you saw this uh, this colonist here, uh, Schwanhilda, exported or pulled those stones out of the stockpile because they weren't accepted here and put them on the ground. But actually, I want to set up some stockpiles for um, for crafting later, um, and we're gonna we're gonna set those up over here. I think I think we'll do here. And here, and I want to mine this area. Oops, wrong button. Mine this area here, so we can have a little bit more space. Let's take that out. And I want three stockpiles total in a line there, and I'll show you why when we get there. Uh, or if you've seen my previous series, you know why. So it takes them a little bit of time to chop uh, trees and stone. Part of that is because only a few colonists have tools right now. We can see that here. Actually, we should go here in the colonist management. So right now we have eight colonists total. Uh, they're all very unhappy. They're hungry, they're thirsty, and they're homeless. We need to deal with the water situation. Um, and then this is a settle down. We'll get to that eventually. Um, actually, maybe we won't in this in this game, but in the campaign, it's, it's useful. 
which is a new feature to uh, the campaign recently since the last time I played. Uh, we can have a, a, a an equipped tool or their preference. So if there's an X here, they would like to have this tool and they don't currently. We only had one of each tool, so we kind of uh, had to spread those around a little bit. Although Ermintrud, uh claimed a shovel and a um, stone hammer, which is kind of a jerk move, but that's okay. We need a lot of a lot of picks though, um, because the picks uh, are for are for mining, and that's for both uh, stone and tree. I think I assume there's no axe, so I assume that the the, the pickaxe. Uh, serves as a tree axe as well. Uh, there are five color zones here, and we'll, we'll get into those later in the game, uh, but those can be used for logistics a little bit and for uh, colonist management so that the colonists don't run all over your map. And I was really bad at that in my other series, and I hope, I'm hoping to get good at that in this series. And then we, over here we have jobs. So construction, mining and harvesting, farming grove, ranch, crafting, power, and logistics. And the bigger the little square is inside of the of the box, the more apt that person is at that job. And the, if they're selected like these ones are, or not selected like these ones are, uh, if they're selected, that colonist can do that job. So we'll probably reduce these a little bit. And you can do auto assign to, to help, but uh, we'll probably reduce these a little bit as time goes on and so that a colonist isn't doing as many isn't able to do as many different jobs so we've done a bunch of a uh, collection of trees and stones now the last ones are here we have some thirsty people i see them complaining about so let's um let's build we can press b uh a, a, a well here and then i want another stockpile which is shortcut key p but for that being way over in the far corner of the keyboard on the us keyboard at least i um i don't like reaching for it that well so this is under construction now. I don't remember what it cost. It costs two rocks. We have plenty of rocks and they're building it now, but it still throws an error because um, because it's not linked to an output stockpile, which will probably tell us once. Yeah, it also says no no output stockpile assigned there in the mouse over. Now it just actually shows it. We'll right click on that stockpile and there will be water uh, already selected. And they're going to start pumping now. And uh, and then that that uh, warning over their heads that's a little little dropper uh -huh. should tell us that they uh, should should start getting satisfied. Uh, they also have food uh, satisfaction level, a housing satisfaction level, sleep, social, and happiness overall happiness. So the social uh, we can't do this yet actually. So never mind. Um, let's come over here and set these up. And what I want to do here is set one of them for uh, wood, uh, logs rather, wooden logs, and one of them for rock. And the third one I'm going to leave empty for right now. And they're going to automatically pick up stuff that's laying on the ground and carry it into those particular stockpiles. They can also pick it up from this stockpile to take to those stockpiles. But I'm going to let them clean up the ground first, and then I'll, sh I'll show a little, a little uh, trick here. And while they're doing that, I'm also going to give them the job of expanding our territory. Now we put down a, a uh, bonfire here. Yeah, bonfire here. and But that only expanded our territory out to this line on uh, on this, this bound of it. Then you can see it out here further. Anytime you see gray um, little, I don't know, whatever, uh, edge markers here, uh, property markers, that means that it's a enemy den, and in this case, it's a cobra den. So we're going to have to eventually send our combat bots, of which we have two, uh, over here to fight these cobras. There are, there are five cobras, two cobras and three king cobras. We're going to have to send our bots over to fight them in a little while uh, in order to expand in that direction. But we don't really need to expand in that direction just yet. However, there is another cobra den over here. It has three cobras and two king cobras. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. I do want to continue the uh, territory expansion, so we're going to go this way. And I think I'm going to put one, like, up in this neighborhood here someplace. So we can kind of push in that direction. You will push a little bit against their bounds, but uh, it'll kind of, like, reach an equilibrium, uh, depending on where the, uh, where the markers are for their expansion. 
So the next thing that we need to do is to start crafting. We need to make things like wooden boards and stone blocks and then other stuff later. And we're still working on the tomatoes and the uh, and the strawberries, and that's fine. And we're also still working on the water, and that's fine as well. But there's some there's some great things here. Oh, and it's telling us that the mid late game balancing is in progress. So we may need to use the shipping port to get resources we need. And we're just gonna click that to clear that objective out of the thing here. Oh, and we just satisfied the water objective. Great, and we got 20 coins for our efforts. That's nice. Um, so, and then that replaced us with mining or unloading tier one resources of logs, rocks, and wheat. And there's wheat here, and we're gonna we're gonna collect that in a little bit, and then we can actually farm more wheat right there, which is why I put these farms here to kind of have farming in this neighborhood here. Both of those uh, bonfires were built, so now we've expanded our territory even more. And there's another uh, in this case it's a it's a bat camp over here that we'll need to eventually battle against. So uh, the next thing is is crafting. I want to clear some land here. Uh, let's go that far, maybe. I'll let them come and clear that out. Uh, there's some stumps here from spruce trees. You get one log from a stump. And here's a turtle. The turtle's name is Max. And uh, here's another turtle. And then here is a Eurasian blue tip, whose name is River. So some of the animals are wild, it will always be wild. Things like turtles and birds and uh, rabbits are always wild. Uh, but things like sheep, you can actually tame. And we're gonna do that because tamed animals can give us some materials. Uh, things like wool from sheep, milk from cows. Uh, chickens or other birds are not tameable, which is interesting. Maybe they will be eventually, and then you can maybe get eggs from them. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Let's go back into the building menu and put down a couple of basic workplaces. One here and one here. And then we'll need a couple more stockpiles. One here and one here. Now this this workplace can make a workplace can make a variety of different items. The, um, the items that are, have a white text are ones that you can make now with the supplies you have in your in your in your possession. So I put this next to the the wooden log stockpile for a reason. We're gonna make wooden boards there, and then we're gonna output them into this stockpile. And I right click by the way to do that. I don't know if I actually explicitly said right click. And then here uh, we're gonna make stone blocks out of rock. So I, this one's right here, and we're gonna output it into here to uh, and which is automatically selected the uh, stone block. Ah, uh, here's some cows. Oops, here's some cows, uh, which are are a pasture animal, and you can see here that these are not a pasture animal. Look at that chicken, though. And the chicken also doesn't say that it's a pasture animal, so you can kind of see what the uh, what the distinction is here as to whether they're a pasture animal or not. And then, so so they will come and they will craft as many stone blocks as they can until the output stockpile or stockpiles are full. And the same thing with the wooden boards. I'm going to let them go ahead and do those. That'll satisfy these two. Um, these two uh, these two needs here. We only need one of each. It's not that, that big of a deal. But uh, then we're going to also need to make these wooden parts. And that's where we need wheat. As you can see here in the tooltip, they're producing a basic workplace or an automated basic workshop. Automated stuff comes later in the game. Um, and uh, we've produced a wooden board, a stone block, and wheat. So we're gonna we're gonna get some wheat uh, harvested. We acquired a stone block, which unlocked the piers. We uh, completed the quest for plant tomatoes and strawberries, and so now we have uh, 20 more coins to our name. And then unlocking wooden board unlocked a lot of stuff, including a table. And that's actually the next thing that I want to build. The tables are used um, to to satisfy exhaustion, and they also satisfy social. And so does the bench, actually. But they both required wooden boards, so I couldn't do one before that. Uh, so is a beach chair. So there's a there's a variety of social buildings here. I'm going to do the uh, the the table. And I think I'll put it here, kind of right now, with the center of the colony. Eventually, uh, the colony will be expanding, and we'll add some more tables. So there's some nearby where they go. There's our chicken again. The next thing is to mine slash harvest all of the wheat. And someone will run over there and start working on that, I assume. Looks like uh, 
Marvad is going to take care of... Nope, he's picking up stone. Okay. Raymond? Yeah, Raymond and uh, Berta are harvesting wheat. There's a piece of wheat sitting there, which... Oh, that's when I harvested earlier. I want to set this stockpile to accept wheat. And then people will uh, come and pick it up and drop it off. Alright, right, so we completed Minor Unload Tier 1 Resources. That was this extra one here. We got the, the wheat mined. Uh, we also oh, we do need to make a, uh, a bench in addition to the table for places to rest. Uh, maybe we can put a bench in over here. Out of the way. R to rotate the item. We can put it right here on the on the beach. But also kind of tucked into a corner, so don't have to worry about it. And then Q, E are used to uh, rock the map uh, rotation. And they're also up upgrading in their abilities uh, as they do different tasks. Middle mouse button and click drag also does uh, does rotation, and then right mouse button click drag does uh, panning. But I use usually w usually use WASD for panning. I want to build one more basic workplace right here, and then again another stockpile. I'll use the the shortcut key of P for that. Uh, we got 25 coins for creating places to rest. That's great. And we need to produce four total wood boards in order to um, in order to satisfy this quest, which we actually started earlier than we needed to. Don't make noise when you click on them, apparently. And I'm going to want this to make uh, wooden parts. But I want to let this get satisfied first, this wooden boards be satisfied first, before we actually start making the wooden parts. So I'm not going to sign that up with Stockpile, and so the building won't work. I want to get the wood board thing crafted here, or finish, finish here, and then we'll do the wooden part next. Should probably do another uh, bonfire somewhere in this neighborhood. Uh, maybe I'll keep it in line with that one. Yeah, that'll work. It'll, it'll claim this area here. And also it'll go right up against this, uh, oops, this, uh, this spider, or this bat, uh, graveyard. Well, it's not a bat graveyard, it's a graveyard filled with bats. And we'll expand that one there as well, and we'll bump up against them. And, uh, Swanhilda is sleeping. Sleeping on the job, literally. Oh, we need... Oh, we did. We satisfied the board one. Okay, so let's... Uh, wooden part. Right-click to output to that stockpile. So that's going to take in the uh, wooden boards, the stone blocks, and the wheat from here, here, and here and make wooden parts that are output here. We need to make four of those for this quest, one of them for this quest, and we're also going to have to work our way toward bricks. But that'll be a little bit yet yeah, before we get that far. Horse station is the first logistic system component. Well, the first automated logistic system component. So, as you continue expanding on this map, it gets very big, and you can see how slow the colonists move, um, especially when they're carrying things like, like blocks or rocks rather they're carrying something they move slower and the heavier the item things like rocks versus things like wheat now the heavier the item the slower they move so um we want to use a combination of these these uh zones these, these zones here and a uh, horse in horse stations to um to partition off our map into different areas and so then you can have people that are, say, mining up here in a green zone. Oops, that's that's her in the green zone. Uh, you can set the bonfire. Oh, right here. Right, sign color zones. Uh, we can set this bonfire to be a green color zone. And then it should output... There's a way to see the zone... See if I remember how to do this. Uh, if I if I take, there's a way to see the zone colors, or used to be at least. Hmm. I don't remember how. Wait, can you just do? 
Okay, you have to paint... You can paint the zones in separate from the, um... Separate from the bonfires. In interesting, that's new. That's actually... That actually is new. Uh, you used to set the bonfire and then whatever that range... The bonfire range covered is what the zone was. I don't know if you even need to set the bonfire colors now, then. Uh, we'll have to experiment with that. So, as we expand, uh, we can fa find things like sand geodes that have iron ore, copper ore, gold ore, and rock in them. We can find uh, things like graveyards, which is, of course, the home component of this bat-infested area. Uh, we have things like... Oh, there's one of the bats. Oh, and his name is Count Dracula. Of course. Um... Uh, so we're going to we're gonna have to go into some combat very soon uh, in the next episode. But as we expand, we'll want to zone off different areas and assign different columns, say the ones who are doing different kinds of harvesting, or mining rather, mining and harvesting, to those zones. Let's actually pause the game. To those zones so that they, uh, so they stay in those zones and collect the resources in those zones, deposit them into a local stockpile, and then we can use horse stations to carry those items from up here, say, down into here to be dropped off into these dedicated stockpiles but we'll save that for the next episode i think this was a good introduction to the basics of the game and we'll get into those uh, sort of middle tier items or tasks in the next episode so thank you all for joining me and i'll see you next time bye for now